Good morning, YouTube. It's Barbara Jean, and it is very much early, early morning. It's actually about 2.30 in the morning. I couldn't sleep, so I decided to make a video and show off my gray. See all the gray hair I got? All in the back. <laughs> I earned every one of them. Okay, um, I, I um, wanted to make a video, I suppose, um, on the some of the healings that the Lord has given me over the years. I, um, when I say I've suffered in this life, <laughs> I've suffered. <laughs> I, I, when I look back at all the things that I've gone through, it, it amazes me I've actually gone through all these things, but they've all had a purpose and a reason, and, and the Lord is good. He, he knows exactly what he's doing, and um, <clears throat> it has drawn me closer to the Lord, and, and that's what sometimes our, su well, our suffering is supposed to, to bring us to the Lord. It reveals things to us. Um, I want to read first a couple of verses for you to um, help illustrate what I'm trying to say. Let's go to First Peter. First Peter chapter 1, starting at verse 13. Wherefore, gird up your loins of your mind, be sober, and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ, as obedient children, not fashioning yourself according to former lusts in your ignorance, but as he which hath called you is holy. So be holy in all manner of conversation, because it is written, Be holy, for I am holy. And if ye call on the Father, who without respect of persons judges according to every man's work, past the time of your sojourning here in fear. For as much as you know that you are not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversations received by traditions from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot, who verily was ordained before the foundations of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you. Um, I want to also read in the book of Job, uh, Elihu is again speaking, is still in conversation with Job, um, actually rebuking Job for uh, some of the things that Job was saying. In in Job's, Job was suffering terribly physically and emotionally. He just uh, and lost all his his goods, his family, his everything, and um, Elihu, the only one who was able to understand what was really going on with Job, is rebuking Job really about his his um what what Job thinks, basically, um, and uh, he's already told Job that God speaks to man in two ways. First way he speaks to uh, man is through dreams and visions, which I've already talked about um, in one of my previous videos, which is La La Land. And uh, he speaks to man through his suffering. Now, uh, starting at Job 33, starting at verse 19, he, chase, he is chastened also with pain upon his bed and with multitude, uh, and the multitude of his bones with strong pain, so that his life aboreth bread and his soul dainty meat. His flesh is consumed away, that it cannot be seen, and his bones that were not seen stick out. Yea, his soul draweth near unto the grave, and his life to the destroyers. If there be a messenger with him, an interpreter, one among a thousand, to shew unto man his uprightness, then he is gracious unto him, and saith, Deliver him from going down to the pit, I have found a ransom. His flesh shall be uh, fresher than a child's. He shall return to the days of his youth. He shall pray unto God, and he will be favored unto him. And he shall see his face with, face with joy, for he will render unto man his righteousness. He looketh upon men, and if any say, I have sinned, and preferred that which was right, and it, it profiteth me not, he will deliver his soul from going into the pit, and his life shall see the light. Lo, all these things worketh God oftentimes with man, to bring back his soul from the pit, to be enlightened with the light of the living. So what he's saying here is, God speaks to us not just through dreams, but also through our suffering. And if we can humble our hearts 
to say, if, if one person, even one person can say to the Lord or pray for this person, basically be a, a stand-in, an advocate for this person and say, you know, he's done this and then, you know, he's been a good person or, um, Lord, he have mercy. But basically, I'm trying to say, he's going to, excuse me, he's not saying that he's a good person. What he's saying is, um, uh, I will be a ransom for him. Basically, that's Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is our ransom. And Jesus stands in the gap between us and the Father, it says, I will ransom this person. I will ransom them through my goodness. And um, so what he's saying here is this, you've got a person who's able to interpret and say to the person who's suffering, this is why you're going through this. You need to humble your heart. You need to bring yourself to the Lord and uh, cry out for mercy and, and admit to him that you've got sin in your life. And when you do that, the Lord will deliver you. Now, it's very hard for the people to do that very thing, to humble themselves, to say, Lord, um, I'm going through suffering, and what is it? Show me my sin. Uh, we have the Holy Spirit, in our, um, thankfully, in this dispensation, who helps to interpret for us the things that we need to interpret um, to help to, so that we can receive our healing. We also have the blood of Jesus Christ, who is the ransom for our sin. And the Lord is... Um, faithful to deliver us from our sins. Um, uh, psalm 6, so it's a short psalm, but it also illustrates what I'm trying to say. Psalm 6, O Lord, rebuke me not in thy anger, neither chasten me in thy hot displeasure. Have mercy upon me, O Lord, for I am weak. O Lord, heal me, for my bones are vexed. My soul is also sore vexed, but thou, O Lord, how long? Return, O Lord, Lord, deliver my soul, O save me from, for thy mercy's sake. For in death there is no remembrance of thee. In the grave who shall give thee thanks? I am weary with my growing, groaning. All the night make I my bed to swim, for I water my couch with my tears. Mine eyes is consumed because of grief. It waxes old because of mine enemies. Depart from me, all ye workers of iniquity, for the Lord hath heard the voice of my weeping. The Lord hath heard my supplication. The Lord will receive my prayer. Let mine enemies be ashamed and sore vexed. Let them return and be ashamed suddenly. So um, the Lord encourages us to call out to him for um, mercy and uh, to forgive us of our sins. He wants us to plead with him for forgiveness and um, he will show us the error of our ways, if you will, so that we can be healed. Um, just a, a few examples of my own life, the things that I've suffered with over the last year, last many years of my life. Um, some were a re result of my bad attitudes, and others were a result of um, ancestral problems, and so not directly me, but um, I just want to want to give you some illustrations of some of the things I've gone through and how the Lord actually delivers us through our suffering. Um, uh, one of the first deliverances from physical problems uh, was when I was a child. Um, I had lumps growing all over my body and tumors that didn't seem to be, they didn't, the doctors didn't know what, they, what to do. I was just, I think I was about six years old at the time. And um, they sent me to the hospital to get some biops biopsies done. And uh, my mother, being a mother, a woman of faith, went to the church and asked for for prayers. And they mysteriously, as mysteriously as, as they showed up on my body, they mysteriously went away. And so the Lord healed me during that time. So that wasn't, I don't think, was anything that had to do with my um, sin, but maybe something ancestral was a result of that particular problem. Um, I suffered uh, with dyslexia growing up. I didn't know I had dyslexia, but I had dyslexia, and uh, it, it, it caused me a lot of problems during school. Um, um, but I, I managed to get through school. The uh, Lord was gracious to me, but I had a hard time reading. Um, I'd have to read something three or four times over just to comprehend a little bit of what I was reading so that I could move on, you know, to what, you know, to comprehend what I was studying. Uh, I went through this for many years and not realizing I had a problem. And uh, when I was going to university, I cried out to the Lord and I said, uh, Lord, I need some help. Uh, if I'm going to go to university, I, I can't go to university with this problem. And the Lord um, 
brought a woman into my life who helped me. Uh, she was a registered nurse and also a um, kinesiologist. And one visit, one visit with this woman, I was healed from dyslexia. And the Lord um, uh, through prayer, a lot of she just prayed for me once, and this, the problem with dyslexia dissipated. And um, I just she she was able to tell me that the problem came into what um, started it was an emotional disturbance that happened while I was in the womb of my mother. If you can imagine that. Um, but the Lord delivered me from that, and I it was because I cried out to the Lord for help. He delivered me. Uh, another problem I experienced over the years was uh, when I was in university, I was confronted by some witches, which is uh, um, a, a story I think I'd like to go into later on another date, another later, later date, about how I had to um, deal, uh, I was confronted with some witchcraft while I was in university, and voices started to, I started experiencing voices, and uh, and, uh, but the Lord delivered me from that, and it was a that was a miracle for me. That was really, really amazing. Um, but these witches had access to my spirit through some bad feelings I had about myself, and um, the Lord was able to deliver me once I cried out to Him. He delivered me from this these curses that these witches were putting on me from my university professors. They were they were witches in these university press professors and. Um, like I said, it was an interesting story, and I learned a lot from it. Um, but, and then also the Lord brought me to this book called The Bondage Breaker at that time by uh, a man named Neil T. Anderson, who, that book taught me so much about spiritual warfare, and um, so the Lord delivered me from my uh, affliction of, of these voices that were, were telling me to go kill myself, basically, and and um, problems with fear and, and unbelief and all sorts of things that were coming because of these voices that were tormenting me. But through my torment, I cried out to the Lord and he delivered me. Um, <clears throat> some physical problems that I had that the Lord delivered me from was um, when I was living in Toronto, and not just while I was living in Toronto. I lived in Toronto for about three years, but it was only a short period of time in my life. But my whole life, I... I struggled with migraine headaches. I had a terrible time with migraine headaches through my whole life. I mean, it was almost a, a daily uh, suffering for me. I had two um, minor mi migraines, major migraines, um, totally, um, you know, on my back in a dark room, migraines. Uh, but I got tired of it. I finally cried out to the Lord and said, Lord, you know, you live with something so long you don't realize you're living with it. Um, but anyway, I got to the point where I finally realized this is not a way to live. And some friends of I, mine who, you know, we were all attendants of a certain church had heard about the Toronto Airport Church, which had a, a dispensation for healing. And I had to step out in faith, and, and I said to my friends, let's go. Let's go to this church. I need some healing. I need some deliverance from headaches. I need some help. So we all went to this church, and uh, it was something, an experience I'd never experienced before. People jumping and praising the Lord and, and raising their hands, and, and just the joy of the Lord was there so strong in this church. And and uh, at the end of the service, they, you know, you line up for, for healing. People would come, they come down a line, basically, and just pray over you in groups, over you in tongues. And this was a new experience for me. But with faith, I went because I needed some help. And uh, they stood around me and they prayed for me and I fell backwards. And when I got up, um, I didn't feel any different. I think I laid on the floor for about five, ten minutes and, and uh, got up. I didn't feel any different. But within two days after going through that experience, the Lord revealed the reason for my migraine headaches, that there was a, um, a, a baby memory, a me memory from when I was a baby, that I didn't understand. Of course, being a child, you wouldn't understand some of these things that go on around you, but 
the Lord delivered me from this memory. And that was what was causing my migraine headaches. Well, I stopped having migraine he headaches from that time that I went to this airport church. I stopped suffering from migraine headaches. Praise the Lord. Um, another healing I received was um, not too long after this, I started to experience sciatica. Now, talk about pain. That was awful. It got increasingly worse. I couldn't stand. I couldn't sit. I couldn't walk. Couldn't lie down. Couldn't do anything without this major pain um, in my legs, um, from my my feet all the way up to my hips. It was awful. It was a terrible, terrible pain. And um, again, I I decided I was going to step out in faith. And I went to a church in in my local area. Not the church I was attending, but a church in my local area that I'd heard did the same thing that the airport church did. That they, you know, they prayed for you in tongues. And so I went to this church, and and I, I first went just to see what they were up to and who they were, and um, and I saw, saw that they, 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 you didn't have to be a member member to for them to be, for them to pray for you. I went back the next Sunday evening, asked them to pray over me. They did. I fell backwards, laid on the ground for about 15 minutes. When I got up, the sciatica was gone, never returned. But the next day, I experienced an emotional breakthrough from some things, some bad attitudes that I didn't realize that I had in regards to um, some family members. So the Lord was using my pain to help me help me to cry out to Him. My suffering uh, forced me to to turn to the Lord and cry out to Him and ask for help, and He did. He gave me help, but He also showed me that my pain was a result of something that was in my life. Um, recently, a few years ago, um, about three or four years ago, I was suffering from, I began to suffer from fibromyalgia. Terrible. It was getting to the point where I couldn't even, I mean, it take me about five minutes to get out of bed. I was in so much pain. My, my muscles, my joints were achy, sore. Um, I don't know how I was going to get, I got through the day of work, you know, I was working as a maid even then. And I was getting to the point where I couldn't do it anymore. And I cried out to the Lord. I said, Lord, I mean, I wasn't, I wasn't even asking for healing, I think, with this particular time I, the Lord healed me. I just cried out to the Lord. I said, you Lord, I can't do this anymore. I can't do my job anymore because I'm in so much pain. And uh, after telling the Lord this, a uh, couple of nights later, the Lord showed up while I was in my bed. My heart started to thump and I started to feel this presence in my room, my vi my whole body started to vibrate. I think I vibrated. This intense vibration went through my body for about two minutes, and then it was gone. And I jumped out of bed and I stopped. And I went. I just jumped out of bed. The pain was completely gone, completely gone. Um. Now I'm not quite sure what the emotional. Um, problems I was suffering in, because the Lord didn't really reveal that to me. But I do know in the last several years, in the last, actually in the last three or four in particular, um, the Lord has been releasing a lot of emotional um, and spiritual bondages that I've been under that I didn't realize. So perhaps the fibromyalgia was um, was the beginning of my freedom of the emotional um, problems that I was facing, I have been facing all my life basically some from my childhood, from some from my teen years, some from my early 20s, 30s, and into my 40s. And so the Lord has been really good, and he's been releasing fears and bondages. And I've just been learning, really, throughout all these things, all the pain that I've been going through, that you really need to just cry out to the Lord. You know, uh, too often, especially Christians, too often Christians are are sucked into the world system that say go to the doctor first <laughs> take a whole bunch of pills and we don't see God's solution for our problems we don't see you know we get sucked into the world system of, uh, of drugs and and, uh, and and numbing down our pain when God doesn't tell us to do that he tells us to cry out to him he tells us to humble our hearts to repent to um, be willing to see our own sin on um, our own uh, unrighteousness and that God will deliver us through our through our dreams and visions but also through our pain and suffering um, so um, this may not be for everyone out there
but um, for someone out there who is going through some physical problems and has never doesn't believe or has a hard time believing that God is a res is no respecter of persons. God is no respecter of persons. Ba basically, he will, what he's done for one person, he will do for another. If you're suffering physically, cry out to the Lord. Ask him to show you or, or bring someone into your life who will help you to show you what the error of your way is. Um, Elihu was that person for Job. Um, you know, the Lord has brought several people into my life to show me the error of my ways attitudes I didn't realize I had. The Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is also an advocate for you. So cry out. You have this you have the Lord in your life to to help you through these things. And he will show you. And uh, for most people their suffering has to do with either something that that uh, was an ancestral sin or an open door through some past uh, um, error um, or bad attitude that developed through childhood. Um, oh, I forgot to mention that the, the, the times when I was suffering from voices um, when I was in UBC was so from a childhood memory. The Lord gave me a childhood memory of something that I said as a young child, something that I invited in, um, a bad attitude that I invited in as a young child. Like, again, something I think I'll explain later on, perhaps in another video. But... Um, the Lord is merciful, and if you cry out to Him, He answers your prayer. He wants you to put away your self-righteousness. He wants you to put away trying to do it on your own. He wants you to humble yourself and, and receive through Him, through His Son, Jesus Christ, who died on the cross for you. Through His blood, He's the ransom for our sins. And He stands in the gap and cries out for us to, to come to Him. And the Holy Spirit is our comforter and our guide and will open the doors to understanding. Um, so anyway, I hope this blesses somebody out there today. Um, God bless you all, and uh, give your trust and faith to the Lord.